against apartheid is here to the outside G4S because there's the appalling record of G4S complicit in the execution, imprisonment, maiming and uh, treatment and assassinations of Palestinian footballers. This includes children playing football, four children playing football on the beach um, in Gaza um, during the last attack on Gaza and three children were killed on the roof of their own houses and only yesterday we have had a prisoner a footballer, a um, Palestinian central midfield footballer arrested for the eighth time and so we're here today as g for us we're complicit in all of that treatment and killing of people and uh, we are going to read for you a poem for Palestine by poet, Scottish poet Paul McElhenney. Katrina. Oh, we hear the women and children cry as the shells and missiles fly wantonly by. Whether in supplication or in intifada, it's always the same in poor tragic Gaza. Under assault by land, from the sea and the air, the people of Gaza know nothing but despair. To the outside world, they cry out for assistance and our leaders look on with callous indifference. Occupied and put on an IDF calorie controlled diet, what do you expect but riots and disquiet? The Israeli state deems them unto-mention action and we sit idly by complicit in Israeli settlement expansion. To live in such penury can only breed hate. It is irrational to blame the victims we create. World want to see an end to the rocket fire. But a child can see how likely that is to transpire. It's about the land. It's always been about the land. That's been made quite clear by Israeli High Command. They want it all cleansed of indigenous Palestinians. The playbook is there with the American Indians. We call on right-thinking people all over the world to expel Israel from world football. That is from FIFA and its Congress next year or before the World Cup. Expel Israel, apart that Israel, from football. Thank you. We are opposing them. We, we are fighting that. We are fighting that. Of course we are. What do you do? Walk away from it.
We are here today outside the headquarters of the British security contractor G4S to demand the justice for Raik Abdul Salam al Jabri, who was tortured to death in an Israeli prison. G4S secures many of the prisons in Israel where torture is a standard practice, including one of the prisons. Raik Abdul Salam al Jabri was interrogated in. 37 years old father of five young children, Raid Abdul Salam al Jabri, died last week on 9 September 2014 after being severely and repeatedly tortured by Israeli interrogators at Ashley Prison. Israel had claimed Al Jabri had committed suicide by hanging himself in his cell. But autopsy revealed the clear signs of torture. Al Jabri had suffered a brain hemorrhage following repeated blows to the head and face. His neck showed no signs of hanging. We demand Israel be sanctioned for its gross abuses of basic human rights. And we demand G4S stop its complicity with the Israeli occupation. Stop the torture. Shame on you, Israel. Stop the torture. Shame on you, G4S. Shame on you, G4S. Free, free. Palestine. Free, free. Palestine. Free, free. Palestine. Free, free. Palestine. We are also here today to commemorate the 32nd anniversary of the Sabra Shatila massacre, the 1982 Israeli invasion of Lebanon killed over 30,000 civilians. The siege of Beirut lasted for 70 days. Beirut was subjected to a relentless barrage of air, naval and artillery bombardment. The Israeli bombardment was random and indiscriminate. Food, electricity and water supplies were cut off. Over 500,000 people were driven from their homes. The IDF calculated that they had used some 960 tons of ammunition in trying to destroy the city. The price asked by Israel to stop the destruction of Beirut was for 14,000 PLO fighters to abandon the city leaving behind their families. The U.S. brokered peace deal guaranteed the safety of the Palestinians left behind in the camps. A multinational peacekeeping force would be deployed to protect them, supposedly. <coughs> the U.S. did not honor its word, and three weeks after the PLO evacuation, they withdrew the multinational force, giving the green light to Israel to invade West Beirut and massacre the Palestinians in the camp. And some 3,000 defenseless Palestinian women and children were rounded up in the refugee camps of Sabra and Shatila and systematically murdered in cold blood. The Falange militia were Israel's proxy in Lebanon. Their members were recruited from the Maronite Christian community. They were paid for, trained and armed by Israel. They were effectively an extension of the IDF and were usually sent in to do the dirty work. The Israelis supervised the operation from their forward command post, a six-story building overlooking the camps. From there, they gave logistic support and relayed orders to the soldiers on the ground. 
Concerned that reports of the ongoing slaughter would leak out, the soldiers were ordered to continue the killing throughout the night to facilitate the Israelis lit up the sky with flares all night long. The idea was to kill as many Palestinians as quickly as possible before international pressure would put a stop to the operation. Over 3,000 elderly men, women and children were murdered. Next, the evidence had to be buried quickly, so the Israelis sent in bulldozers. Houses were packed with bodies and demolished to form mass graves. One such mass grave contained a thousand bodies. Dr. Anne Sui Chai, an um, orthopedic surgeon from London working at the hospital in the Sabra Shatila refugee camp, was an eyewitness to the massacre. We share a few of her memories. In the theatre, I operated on a woman and a child. The woman had major surgery for a gunshot wound of the abdomen. She was waking up from the anaesthetic. When the child was brought back from the theatre recovery room, I nipped back in to see both of them and remained, reminded the nurses in intensive care to give both of them blood transfusions. I was told that the packet of blood being transfused into the woman was the last one. The child had been wounded by a hand grenade chucked into the midst of little uh, groups of little children. He had lost a fair amount of blood through a severe spinal artery, but otherwise he was stable after his operation. Both needed blood and they were of the same blood group. The Palestinian woman overheard the nurses talking to me and asked us to give the blood to the child instead of her. Then she asked for some painkillers and died shortly afterwards. After the massacre, some of the very soldiers that took part in the slaughter amazingly turned up at the hospital for treatment. Six of them had fallen off the roof of one of the camp houses while rounding up Palestinians. The natural reaction was to turn them away. That I felt somebody gently pulling at my white coat. It was Aziza, the hospital administrator. She wanted to talk to me in private. Please, sweet, you have to treat these people. I know what you are thinking. But believe me, my family have suffered so much and I ask you to do this for our sake. We were forced to leave Jerusalem, then the siege, then the massacre. All these wounds are still sore, but we cannot deny anybody in medical care. We are the Palestinian Red, Cross, Red Crescent Society and our principles compel us to give medical care to all alike, even our enemies. I walked towards the sports stadium. I had not found the strength to visit this area before. At sunset it looked hideous. People had been killed here. People were buried here. I seemed to hear their voices echoing mournfully in the wasteland. This place had been pounded incessantly by Israeli aeroplanes during the siege. During the massacre it was occupied by the Israelis and the camp people told me that trucks of men, women and children were taken to the stadium by the Israelis and many had disappeared. The body of a little child I had once treated had been found in the 15th of September, the day of the massacre. With other little children, he had been blown up by a hand grenade thrown into their midst. All around the stadium I could see cloths, mainly women clothes. Angry survivors told me large numbers of women had been forced en masse to undress and were raped by the soldiers before they were killed.